peeled together with 3dprint.com. So there's a lot of days in 3D printing, or even months or sometimes even years, where you don't seem to be making any progress, where progress seems to be incremental at best. It's very difficult to tell if we're getting anywhere and if we're improving. And today is not one of those days, because today we very, very definitely did make progress. Um, so uh, there's two different uh, things going on, and both of those are very significant. Now, the first one is a development that's kind of happened before, and we don't know whether it's what's going to happen with it, let's say. And that development is quite simply uh, the development of a low-cost hydrogel microextrusion printer based on a COSOL Delta 3D printer. Uh, so COSOL, very well-known uh, kind of 3D printer platform. In this case, it's a uh, uh, AnyCubic uh, COSOL printer. It's about $200 printer. And what they've done is they've turned it into a hydrogel extrusion bioprinting system. It's called the Sydney V1, S-I-D-N-E V1. And uh, it's a $1,000, $1,007.52 bioprinting system. Um, what they've done is they've kind of taken a book out of the nose, slam, and fresh systems. Uh, they're trying to create a bioprinting system that's accessible to a lot of the universities around the world, not just the wealthiest universities. So they've taken a, a paste extruder, uh, it's a RepRap Pro extruder designed by Adrian Boyer himself, uh, and they've married it to this really inexpensive platform that's supposed to give them kind of smooth, non-jerky prints. They put Perspex frames on the outside, modify the external part of it a little bit, move the control board outside of the printer, change some of the software a little bit, put some glass plates on the build volume, and then they have place for a HEPA filter and a kind of a HEPA blower. They don't, they don't have that mounted on the system yet, and that's it. And it's a $1,000 system, uh, and I think this is really, really very encouraging. Bioprinting research now is so limited to typically very wealthy universities, very wealthy countries, and something like this could really spread out to thousands of universities worldwide. And think of if you could have the system and then have the extruder kind of switchable to a filament-based system or a paste extruder generally, then you could use it for an engineering class and then later on then switch it to uh, uh, use it for bioprinting. I think this is a fantastic system. Now, the team uh, that's doing this uh, is uh, Sydney Fenucci. Uh, and Earl Prinslow. They're the Biotechnology Innovation Center at Rhodes University in South Africa. And we don't yet know if they're going to successfully commercialize this. This is the point. I mean, there have been systems similar to this before um, that showed a lot of promise, but no one's been really even able to kind of like get lots and lots of people to adopt this kind of system. And that is the, the, the issue with this kind of thing. But this has a real chance of democratizing research and, and the, the initial results of this paper and everything is uh, of this low cost hydrogel system are very, very encouraging indeed. Now, the next thing uh, is, 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 is a super, super exciting development. This is one of the one, this is the one I'm referring to that I, this is really breakthrough stuff. And we don't really often see a lot of breakthrough stuff in 3D printing. And this next, uh, thing is very, very definitely breakthrough stuff. Now, uh, what it is, is a paper in nature. Uh, it's about DLP, DLP, uh, based centrifugal multi-material 3D printing. Uh, this allows them to make lots of different uh, resins with lots of different properties in the same build, up to 180 millimeters, 130 millimeters, uh, by 130 millimeters. They've done this successfully with hydrogels, polymers, ceramics, conductive uh, ceramics, and, uh, and they've managed to we'll use all these materials together. Now, how are they doing this? Uh, Zheng Sheng Cheng and a whole bunch of other people at the Shenzhen Key Laboratory on Soft Mechanics and Smart Manufacturing at the Southern University of Science and Technology in Shenzhen have done something that is remarkably elegant <laughs> and is wonderfully, wonderfully elegant. Um, and you can see it already if you see the dog in the bottom picture. What they're essentially doing is, well, the problem always is why can't we do DLP and SLA multi-material 3D printing? We can't do the 3D multi-material 3D printing because you can't mix two resins in the same bath. If you have residual resin or uh, uh, sticking on the model, you'll contaminate your original bath, or the bath will uh, contaminate your model. And so you're kind of stuck in a problem that you, you have to switch resins and there's no real easy way for you to do this uh, without having to cure the part and then go all the way back and put it back in the printer. So what they've done is it's super elegant and it's really beautiful. And essentially the only thing they're doing here is they take the model out of the bath they then put a kind of like 
they close a box around it and they spin the model at high speed with using centrifugal force, little motor, and then the excess resin is cast off. And then the model can be lowered into another bath to print uh, 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 another completely different type of resin on top of it. It is super fantastic. And the idea is, of course, they, they got the inspiration from dogs and other dog, other mammals that like shake their, you know, if you see a dog is wet, comes into your house, they'll shake everywhere and the water will go everywhere. And that is literally the inspiration for this. Um, and this, uh, what I love about this is that this looks like it can be a totally implementable solution. Now, of course, somebody has to validate the paper. We have to look at it and try it and stuff. But based upon how this is working, this seems like a totally doable thing on a system. It sounds like a totally on a medium format or small format DLP system. This seems like a totally implementable thing. There's no like super magical thing that makes this impossible to implement. Um, now, what does this mean, right? This essentially means that if you can see, if you see it now, that this quite simple setup that you can see in front of you, where you can just put the 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 print uh, uh, the model in different resin baths and then spin it to get cast off the resin, means that that we can now make multi-material 3D printers with a, a degree of local control on the model of what are the properties are. So we can mix a, th a thermoplastic or a kind of a last American kind of model we, with a harder model. We could do things that put circuits or our conductive materials on a non-conductive surface. Uh, we can make uh, things, give them things really interesting properties, make something really weak in one area or really flexible in a particular area, uh, etc. So, you know, and now they're doing this with two different baths of resin, but you can, of course, do this with multiple baths quite easily. So you could use a whole host of uh, materials. So think of something like one of the biggest applications for DLP, SLA, VAT polymerization, hearing aids. Think of in one model, in one printer, being able to uh, put you know, a hard material for the hearing aid shell and then putting a soft material on it to make it more comfortable. And then maybe even putting it in some bath to put a coating on it or a color, right? Or putting it in another bath to put a conductive material on it. This is all possible in this kind of uh, this within this paradigm. I think this is absolutely fantastic because it seems like it could be a technology that could quite easily be commercialized. And uh, so I think, yeah, this is a, a great breakthrough thing. Now we don't know if this is going to make it out of the lab yet. We don't know if it's going to work, but it looks like this could be a, a very, very exciting indeed technology uh, that is in a really simple way, allows you to get the, re the excess resin, the uncured resin off of your part and then to apply new resin to it. Love this. Love this. It's a wonderful breakthrough thing and uh, I'm happy to share it with you. And uh, so my name is Joris Peels. This is 3D Printing News Unpeeled. Thanks to 3dprint.com and uh, you have a great day.